Should we be returning? And that's the big question. Should we now return to paper ballots? Are they a better system than the EVM? Why should the ECI not answer these questions? I'm raising it as a citizen now. EVM hack, EVM tamper, EVM this, EVM that. Rajdeep Sardesai, here as a citizen, I am asking you that why do you allow your panelist and Congress spokesperson to quote the buyer's fake, inaccurate figures of 5 lakh mismatched votes in Maharashtra elections? So where does this 5 lakhs come from? Then later on you say that 30 lakhs, 30 lakhs increase is there. Why did you not correct him there and then that the ECI has already given a full-fledged clarification and exposed the leftist propaganda portal's inaccurate calculation on Maharashtra election results? Why Rajdeep Sardesai? Why are you joining in the league of Congress leaders who are always crying foul and spreading misleading news over EVM? Only when they lose. Otherwise, all is well, just like Jharkhand elections. Time and again, after every election results, your Darbari gang and Congress ecosystem starts demanding to bring back the paper ballot system. But Rajdeep, why are you being ignorant of this fact that till 1990s, India was using paper ballots only? BJP spokesperson Sanju Verma gives a befitting reply on it as well. EVMs were used on a pilot basis for the first time in an assembly election in Kerala. Did BJP win that? No. EVMs were used in 1998 on a larger basis for the assembly elections of Delhi, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. All the three elections were won by the Congress party, not by the BJP. For the first time in a general election on a widespread basis, EVMs were used in 2004 and then again in 2009. Did the BJP win any of these elections? No. But does propagandists like Rajdeep has any idea on how the system of using paper ballots took a toll on the increase in election-related criminal activities? polling booths were captured. Losing party members would snatch and run away with the ballot booths itself. These visuals are from your dear wife and TMC MP Sagrika Ghosh state only, which is West Bengal, where you see how during the Panchayat elections last year, some miscreants could be seen running away with the full booth itself. In fact, Bihar in the 1980s was a main ground for cases like booth capturing. Gunda Gardi was in full sway and history is a witness to the fact that how Congress had rigged elections in the past for their political interest. A very good example of which is the 1981 loss of the then Prime Minister of India Indira Gandhi's nominee Chandra Mohan Singh Negi, who resorted to one of the worst possible rigging in elections to win that one seat of the Garhwal Lok Sabha. And the situation during election got so worse due to massive rigging that the ECI had to intervene and the whole election process was countermanded. They sent a review team and Indira Gandhi in his nominee was found guilty of rigging and corruption. Thereafter, the entire election was ordered. We have some clippings as well of MLA Bharat Chaudhary explaining about the 1981 election in Garhwal. And well, even after that, the mayhem elections in Haryana of 1990 was another example of violent rigged elections in India, where booths were captured, there was bogus voting and the misuse of government machinery, particularly the police. At least 10 people were killed that day and not only that, it is amusing to see how the flag bearers of EVM Hatao, ballot paper Vapis Leao, does not see the number of deaths that take place every time a polling booth is attacked. But there came a drastic positive change after the EVMs were introduced for the first time in 1998. Suddenly, the vote calculations became much easier, convenient and time-saving. Forgery of votes were reduced as one person casted one vote at a time. And EVM saved the votes in its memory where the software was directly governed by polling booth officers. Also, when votes are finally closed, there is absolutely no possibility of a fake vote. ECI, in fact, has time and again clarified on the credibility, accuracy and transparency of the EVMs. So the question arises, why does people like Rajdeep Sardesai, the Darbari gang and Congress ecosystem wants to cripple an already booming Indian electoral system?
Why do they want to take us back to the time when it was easier to capture and attack polling booths? I wonder what their private interests are. Every time they attack one of the premier institutions of India, like Election Commission, asking them to come out clean. But sadly, it's agenda peddlers like Arun Puri and Rajdeep Sardesai who would never question the intentions of Congress leaders for unnecessarily crying foul over EVM and will always show solidarity towards their misleading narratives.